Yesterday at the state opening of Parliament, we saw Her Majesty the Queen wearing the George IV diamond diadem of 1820 for the first time. I thought it might be fun to just do a quick video on this diadem while it is fresh in my mind. The diamond diadem is one of the most iconic pieces of regalia in the royal collection. It was a favourite piece of Queen Elizabeth II and she often wore it to and from state openings of Parliament and she wore it in the procession to her coronation in 1953. In the years up to her death she often chose to wear it in preference to the imperial state crown at state openings. And she's also portrayed wearing it on banknotes early in her reign and on the coinage in more recent years. Queen Adelaide, the consort of William IV, was the first queen to wear it and every queen regnant or queen consort since has used it. Queen Victoria wore the diadem frequently in the early part of her reign. She was painted wearing it in Winterhalter's painting of her in her state robes from 1859. She was even shown wearing it on the penny black stamps. After Queen Victoria's death, it was altered slightly and was then worn by Queen Alexandra, the consort of Edward VII, and then by Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, during the reign of her husband, George VI, before passing in 1952 to Queen Elizabeth II. What is astonishing is that this wonderful object was not made for a queen at all, but for a king. It was one of the extravagant commissions ordered for the lavish coronation of George IV in 1820. It was used at his coronation and was set on top of a large velvet Spanish cap plumed with ostrich feathers, which he wore in Westminster Hall before the coronation instead of the traditional cap of maintenance and as he puffed and sweated his way from Westminster Hall to the Abbey in his coronation procession in 1821. The diadem was made by the royal jewellers Rundle Bridge and Rundle. And made of gold and silver, it has an open-work frame that is set with 1,333 diamonds and with a four-carat pale yellow brilliant at the centre of the front cross. The circlet is edged with two narrow bands of pearls and on the top of it are four crosses patty and between them are four sprays of diamonds that are formed into the shape of the national symbols of the constituent nations of the United Kingdom. Two roses for England, a shamrock for Ireland and a thistle for Scotland. The order for the diadem was placed very early in the King's reign from Rundles and it was completed by May of 1820. It is believed that the man who conceived the design of this exquisite piece was Rundle's chief designer, Philip Liebart, and it is said that the form and design was copied directly from the circlet of a newly proposed imperial state crown that Liebert had designed for George IV, a crown that was, in the end, never commissioned. The diadem cost the staggering sum of £8,216, the stones set into the crown in 1820 were initially hired rather than purchased. That was common practice for Hanoverian coronations and the state crown was only set with a permanent collection of stones in 1837. The price of the hire of the diamonds alone was £800. It was expected that the stones would be returned to Rundles after the coronation but it seems that they remained in the diadem as there is no evidence that they have ever been disturbed and reset. And it's likely that a private transaction took place and that George IV either paid for the diadem personally or that he swapped some of the stones from his private collection for the diamonds in the circlet. Although George's plan for a new state crown was abandoned, he did manage to persuade Parliament to let him commission a new coronation crown to replace an Edward's crown, which was considered dowdy and old-fashioned in 1820. This crown was also designed by Liebert and was commissioned by Rundles and incorporated over 12,000 hired diamonds. Sadly, it was only used once. After his coronation, George IV fancied keeping the crown and asked Parliament to buy it, but with the cost of George's coronation already well beyond budget, primarily because it was postponed as he tried to get rid of his wife Queen Caroline, Parliament said no. 
The higher costs of the stones for this crown came to a staggering £24,000, and with such a massive sum expended, keeping it was simply unfeasible. The crown remained intact until 1823, but then the stones were returned to Rundles. George IV had to make do with a bronze copy of his beloved coronation crown. The frame of the crown survived, but eventually it passed out of royal hands, and after years on loan to the Museum of London, it was sold in 1933. It was bought by Asprey in 1987, and later was acquired by the brother of the Sultan of Brunei, who in 1995 gave it to Queen Elizabeth II for the royal collection, where it can be seen in the jewel house in the Tower of London. Liebert's design for the diamond diadem and for the coronation crown of George IV with their innovative open diamond settings that make the frames almost disappear behind the stones influenced the form and design of the imperial state crown made in 1837 by Rundles for Queen Victoria. So it is rather fitting to see both the imperial state crown which is a 1937 copy of Queen Victoria's, and the diamond diadem together on the heads of the king and queen yesterday. They are lavish examples of Regency period design, and they complement one another beautifully. Thanks for watching. The latest issue of the Antigua magazine is now available. This month I visit Fotheringay, the mausoleum of the Royal House of York and the place where Mary, Queen of Scots, is executed. I explore in the issue the great events that took place in this sleepy English village. If you'd like a copy, go along to the website where individual copies are available and where you can subscribe to both print and digital issues. Mm -hmm.